Hi there, Gemini. Welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here, and I have created a, an affirmation for Gemini. And this is for your attitude of gratitude and abundance. Yours is, I ground my brilliant ideas into inspired action. Okay, why am I saying that? Because Geminis are brilliant at coming up with ideas, and you love to talk about your ideas. But have you noticed when you talk about your ideas that sometimes you don't follow through and actually take inspired action to push things along? I have noticed this myself, and I am a Sagittarian, and what you might want to do if you have a tendency to do this is to, first of all, when you come up with ideas of things you want to do, maybe withhold sharing them with other people until you have gotten the ball rolling. Because I think that sometimes, especially when people are really good at coming up with ideas, they tell other people and people are like, wow, that's amazing. And then that kind of gives you that sense of um, fulfillment and like other people are finding you brilliant or whatever, but it only goes that far. So the payoff comes when you actually complete a project, not when you share an idea about a project. So so that's what where I'm going with this. And really we can apply this to anything in our lives. If we find that there's something that we're doing that isn't isn't um fulfilling itself to kind of see where it's going awry and then do a different thing. And with ideas a lot of times it is in telling other people about them. And the other thing about that is that when you tell other people about your ideas, it gives them the chance to put them down. So that's that can be discouraging. Now, you may say that you have somebody in your life who is really supportive of you. And maybe in that case, it's not going to be um, to your detriment to share an idea with that person. But perhaps you want to at least get the ball rolling before you start sharing the idea with anybody. And that way you prevent um, just spinning your wheels by talking about it. Now I want to talk about some of the astrological transits that are happening. I, I've taken a few notes for November and December for your sign. And this would be for the sun and the rising sign of Gemini. Usually when I do tarot readings, I just say the sun sign because it's um, kind of an artificial, uh, you know, separation of different groups in order to create a, a reading that is, a general reading that is um, for one particular group. But astrology is different because th these are actual transits that affect everyone of one sign. Given the fact that um, there are differences with the person's degree of uh, sun or rising, and you have to take that into consideration in terms of the accuracy. But in the general sense, the sun and the rising sign are very much important for um, these types of uh, astrological transits. And for you, Gemini, in November, you have a powerhouse in the fifth house. Mars is there all month, and, and the fifth house for you is Libra. Libra is a fellow air sign, so that is a trine aspect to your sun, and that's a friendly angle. Things tend to just kind of flow very easily. Manifestation is a lot easier when you have a trine. Um, so Mars gives you that kind of passion, I guess you could call it, or drive, to accomplish things that are connected to artistic projects and home business, home businesses. So 
At the time of the new moon, which is on November 18th, the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter are going to, and the new moon, of course, are going to be in the sixth house of work in Scorpio, and then Mars is going to be in that fifth house. So I think that's going to be a very significant time for you in the second half of the month, or maybe after the first week, actually that uh, you're going to see a lot of um, opportunities for work. And for me, the sixth house can indicate having work. Now, whether you find this to be your life's passion is a different story. But with Jupiter there, it's almost like for the next year, you can find work easily. And so if you're trying to start a business and you still need to make a living, you'll be able to do that and you won't have to worry about how am I going to make ends meet in the meantime or if you are in between jobs or you know when I'm when I say job I mean like career aspiration type of jobs that you might be able to find stopgap <laughs> jobs that you're able to just make ends meet at least and the reason this is important is because if you have some long-range goals like launching a business or making maybe you've already launched your own business but it's still in the infancy stage you won't have to kind of depend on that to provide all your needs which can make it um, go down very quickly because sometimes you really have to nurture these things over you know a fairly long period of time maybe to, to really get it started and if you put so much pressure on yourself to succeed from the get-go that could be you know putting too much pressure on on something that is viable and also for career matters when you really have a certain goal in mind but you haven't landed that perfect um, job you might have other things in the meantime that keep you going and then in December you have a full moon in your sign and this can be um, important because this the sun is in the seventh house, and the seventh house is partnership, and that can indicate that perhaps there's somebody or people that you are reaching on a one on one basis, and that is creating more of a kind of a network within your business or something like that and likewise in December you're going to have a new moon in the sector in the seventh house so you may see that there's an influx in people coming into your life now uh, Saturn has been in the seventh house and so it is possible that for the last few years either you have felt a lack of opportunity or maybe you felt like it was very restricted in in terms of any kind of clients that you were trying to attract and that would be kind of the shadow influence but really this could have been a good time for some of you to have made those connections and they may not have been plentiful to the degree that you would have hoped but they are long lasting and they are going to, they're like seeds that you planted that will see you through the next 30 years. So hopefully that has been the effect for you. But in both instances, you may have felt like things were not like just very uh, flowing and easy. And that is because Saturn is going to be very selective. It's only going to bring to you that which is viable for the long haul not something that's a flash in the pan so anyway I'm going to be picking a couple of nature based cards uh, oracle cards uh, from some of my collections one is the nature spirit deck and that has a Native American theme and the Native Americans have a nature religion, so that's where I'm going with this because of the Taurus full moon. Then we have, uh, <laughs> trying to remember the name. Um, <clears throat> um, oh, it's called um, Earth Magic. There you go. 
And, um, and then I'm going to be picking one from the Energy Oracle deck from Sandra Ann Taylor. And the last one will be the other one I can never remember the name of. Ugh. And I love it so much. Why do I not remember this? Keeper of the Light. Okay. So here I go. Angel of Love. That When I held up that card, it seemed like it was going like in slow motion. Sometimes when I watch other people's videos, it's like the video is not in in um, real time. It's kind of like stuttering. It kind of seemed like it was stuttering. So I don't know if that's going to translate as stuttering on there. I never experienced this with my other camera. Okay, this is the Earth Magic. I get this a lot. River, movement. <clears throat> I love that uh, Joni Mitchell song called River. Because it's 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 a song um, where she references Christmas, you know, living in Canada and um, um, well, I think she was living in southern, you know California at that point. But and she says, "I wish there was a river I could skate over or something." And I I don't know if uh, people in Australia can appreciate this now because you're not dealing with winter, but. I, like I said before, I still can't get over this idea of like Christmas not containing um, snow. It just um, it's I, I wonder about people in Australia if when they are celebrating Christmas and they they hear all these these uh, holiday songs, what they think of it when it's like let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, and you're like let it. Uh, let the sun shine. <laughs> I, I just got this card for Taurus, I think. So I'll be reading this one again, it looks like. <clears throat> and what was the last deck? Um, da -da -da. Angel of Love. Okay, I think it's this one. Keepers of Light. You got Kuthumi, Cloak of Wisdom. All right, I think that's plenty. Okay, let's start with Angel of Love. I always look at the number 249. This beautiful angel comes with roses in her hair and rose-colored wings. She holds a rose quartz heart. Let's see if you can see her rose quartz heart. Yes, there it is. It's kind of pinkish. Um, <clears throat> radiating tender and loving vibrations, bringing you compassion and affection. If you're looking for new love, this angel brings a message of its upcoming approach. Or, if you're look, longing for a deeper, more intimate connection with somebody already in your life, she's here to say that far greater tenderness is available to you. Either way, remember that your first intention for tenderness must be directed inward, and the compassion that you demonstrate toward yourself will influence the energetic potential of these events, in a significant way. The angel of love is smiling on you and forging connections in the energetic realm. Well, the connection that I make with this particular card is, is the seventh house influence of partnership. Now, um, they're talking about love here, and the seventh house is romantic love that is at that committed level. But I think that for people, especially because you have a, this um, Mars in the fifth house, and some of you may be really pushing, striving to have your own business, 
um, in some capacity is spreading that love to everybody that is part of your client base and not being impersonal because Gemini is a sign that tends to be very detached and that's cool I mean that's okay you can be very friendly you don't have to be lovey-dovey with people but it is nice to kind of acknowledge people on a personal level and with the Sun in the seventh house at the time of this new moon in, um, the, I'm sorry this full moon in uh, Gemini on uh, December 3rd that may be a time when you're it's highlighting to you what you need to do in regards to reaching out to others as you try to forge these relationships. Okay, so we have this one, and this is um, the, nat the Native Spirit River. <sighs> okay. Uh oh, this may be the wrong deck. Oh yeah, this is the Earth Magic. Oopsie daisy. Fighting or blocking the flow of your life force can lead you to feeling spiritually void and disconnected from source. Just like the metaphor of the river, it does not work to force or fight this compelling movement. When you simply pay attention and observe the flow, it becomes easier to navigate your experiences and see what lies ahead, or at least get a sense of what is to come by the ever-changing geography that unfolds as you cruise along. Your resistance is hampering your ability to make a choice in this matter. Surrender to the movement of life. Be grateful and you will see the signs along the shore and in the river itself that offer you clues about what direction your egoless self is to be making. Go with the flow is more than a trite aphorism here. It is essential that you do so now. Breathe, relax, and you will know. I always see Gemini as kind of a high-strung sign. I don't know if you would agree with me, you guys, but um, you're ruled by Mercury and also you're an air sign. So um, it's important not to think too much and not to kind of think yourself into a box where you become a prisoner of your concepts. You know, I think of the Eight of Swords or the Nine of Swords in the Tarot. Um, that sense of oppression that comes from identifying with your thoughts. That's what meditation is about, is like stopping the mind from identifying with its thoughts. And once you do that, it's really cool because you no longer believe what you think, you know. Um, and it's, it's, it's funny because um, if you've ever had a panic attack, this is especially important. When you stop believing whatever thoughts that are increasing the adrenaline uh, rush or flow uh, production, <laughs> then you you actually calm down because that's what that's what it's all about. It's it's the thoughts that you're thinking that create the anxiety, and it's not the actual events itself. So even in negative experiences, if you reframe things, you actually can um, understand them from a different perspective and you can, it's, it's easier to accept that particular experience. It's what you tell yourself about it. Okay, let me read Great Mystery. I like that. I like those colors, you know. It's kind of very dramatic greens and blacks and all that. Um, have faith and know that you're divinely guided, even when you have doubts. Trust that you're exactly where you need to be. Believe. You've planted your seeds. Now allow the Creator to do the rest. Even if you can't see into the future, have faith 
that the path will be illuminated and go forward. If you have any recurring challenges, turn them over to the Creator. Not my will, but thy will. Many native cultures refer to the Creator as the Great Mystery. Um, by the way, you, you guys had a lunar eclipse in the ninth house, which is connected to God. It's like the God house. So you may have had an epiphany, but you may have also um, become aware of a, a spiritual bereftment. Is that, is that a proper word? In other words, you may have realized that you didn't have a spiritual life and felt like you were spiritually shallow. It might have exposed something to you. Um, it can be kind of a, I wouldn't say it's a crisis of faith because a full moon isn't like, it, it can be showing you what you need to put into your life, but also maybe you, you're coming to spiritual realizations. Um, and one of them could be that you are not, that you didn't devote your uh, life, your energy to that area and that you need to. Maybe you were too busy uh, with the intellectual side. The ninth house is opposite your, your natural third house that you rule uh, of, um, you know, learning and teaching. But this is teaching at the university level and uh, things like that. So there is an intellectual component of the ninth house, but it's also a philosophical house. So think back to around August 7th when this happened, but it could very easily have occurred after that. Sometimes it is a little bit before that, where people feel, a lunar eclipse in the ninth house, that like an aha moment, you know, about their lives. Maybe you're connecting the dots of certain things that you, maybe you need to have faith. And you've been putting faith in the wrong things. So basically what this is saying is that um, they call God the great mystery because God is so vast and profound that it is unknowable. And a lot of times we can over-intellectualize even God <laughs> and make it into like these, like in a, night, a neat little box and it takes away from the mystery of it. Change can happen in a heartbeat, but some things require time. You've planted the seeds, now give them time to grow. Please be patient and know that it will happen. Whatever receives your care and attention will flourish. And again, you're going to have new moons in the 6th and the 7th houses. Okay, so this is the workhouse and the partnership house. So these are the, those are the seed planting times. And then the last one is Kuthumi, Cloak of Wisdom. You already know the answer. You seek, trust what you know. Okay. I'm always, I really, one thing I really like about this book is I learn about some of these ascended masters or wise people that I, have heard their names, but I didn't know anything about them. Kuthumi, it says it's pronounced Kuthumi, Kuthumi, is an ascended master who appears as a well-dressed Indian man with a golden aura. His teachings were brought to the world by Madame Blavatsky in the 19th century. There are many different theories, and she was a theosophist, by the way. There are many different theories as to his true identity. Many believe he was a wandering man known as a Rishi in India dedicated to walking the path of spirit with very few material possessions. Others believe him to have been a well-educated Sikh. Um, I always called it Sikh, S-I-K-H, because uh, I, um, I like that too, because, um, you know, seeking. <laughs> a spiritual leader who was given a pseudonym to protect his true identity. I believe that he lived a high life, but through spirit, spiritual practice was able to let go of his need for material possessions. Now he helps light workers go beyond the limits set by others and cultivate a personal connection to God. Knowledge is learned. 
Wisdom is remembered. You are in a real cloak of wisdom now. Like Kuthumi or Kuthumi, um, you have been one on a wandering path trying to find answers through study and the insights of others, but now you are un uncovering the truth of your own soul. Your soul is leading the way and you are being encouraged to follow. The fog is clearing. The light has come and is shining on you. Your soul is saying, yes, it's your cheerleader. Follow it and trust the endless wisdom within you. Go, go, go. Well, that's very um, inspiring, Gemini. And you are kind of a wanderer. You like to move. You like to um, be mercurial, uh, changeable, uh, someone who enjoys new scenery and um, can't be pinned down. So... It's it's good to it's good to explore and it's also good to absorb wisdom and I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.